Hey, what's going on guys? I'm hanging out poolside at the Galapagos Tortoise Pool here. Not so uh, bright today, so there'll be no sunbathing, but this also doubles as my hatchling Eastern long neck turtle exercise pen. I come out here like a good dad and I watch the kids in the pool. I'm gonna introduce you to them. These guys are pretty cool. A good portion of my life has been all about action, which still holds true. But now I pour all that time and energy into wildlife conservation, education, and the pursuit of knowledge. This is Camp Tenor. Okay, so as I said, guys, I'm actually hanging out here at the Galop Pool, but it really is a fantastic place for me to showcase some of the aquatic species, and I wanna show you two baby turtles that I got. I've named them uh, Jekyll and Hyde because they're both characters, and I'm gonna get up slowly because they're pretty quick, and we have one right here. Here we go. This is oh, the Eastern Long Neck Turtle. These are a snake neck species of turtle. They're found in Australia, and in Australia, they have long necks, which the snake necks are, and short necks. They have a couple different genus. They have the Emidora, which are short neck species like your pink belly side necks. They also have Elsia, which is another genus, which is a short neck species. But these are the long necks. They belong to the genus Chelodina. And why I like the Longicala species, why I've always wanted this aquatic species, is because these guys in Southern Australia can take cold temperatures. Here in South Florida, we'll get some cold nights, and that can be problematic if you have tropical species, if you're not heating the water. But for me, I don't like to do that. I like to keep animals that I know are gonna do good, like Nostradamus over here coming to take a look again. But anyway, back to the long neck. These guys can actually hibernate. So when they get big enough to be left outside at all times, I'm actually going to be able to leave them out, let them do their thing, and they'll breed readily here. Now, there's only one guy that I know of that breeds these. His name's Paul Vanderskow, and he's the gentleman I got these animals from. I haven't bought a turtle in a long time, but I love this species so much, I actually bought these two little guys, and I wanted to because I've always loved the snake neck turtles. And that's because they're so bizarre looking. They almost remind me of like a Brontosaurus or Diplodocus, one of these sauropod dinosaurs. But in actuality, they're really aquatic and they're also extremely good hunters. So what they do is they'll swim around looking for food or they'll lay in wait. But if they see a fish, they'll swim up to it really, really fast and the fish think, I'm safe, I'm far enough away. They'll keep their head kind of tucked close to their shell and they'll swim, swim, swim fast. Then they stop, the fish thinks it's safe, but that head shoots on out. And much like the Mata Mata, which we've seen in previous seasons, the, the, they can create almost a low pressure effect and suck food right in. So these guys are pretty active hunters. They eat fish, tadpoles, little invertebrates, but in captivity, aside from that, you can also feed them bloodworms, you can feed them pellets, and man, these are just one of my favorite aquatic turtles. So psyched to be working with these. Obviously, if you look, they're tiny, right? So it's gonna be a little while. Their full size is gonna be about 12 inches. So they get pretty decent size. Uh, again, really incredible animal. Now going back to an episode in one of the first seasons of Camp Kennan, we talked about side neck turtles, the pleriodires. Remember, there's pleriodires, side neck turtles, and there's also the cryptodires. So this is a pleriodire, and again, an interesting fact about all pleriodires is they're found in the southern hemisphere exclusively. You can find pleurodires in South America, Australia, and south of the equator in Indonesia. Nowhere else in the northern hemisphere you'll never see a side neck turtle. So that's another interesting thing and it was fun for me to actually get these and work with them down here at my little camp because it is a snake neck. It's so exotic. It's so bizarre looking and I just can't stop loving them. Talking about them. Really pretty little animal right here. You can see the coloration on the bottom. And then on the top, they're just a nice little black or brown. And uh, it varies as they get older. They might get a little lighter carapace. They might keep the dark carapace. The other cool thing about them are their eyes. Really beautiful, expressive eyes on these animals. Uh, really adapted for an aquatic life, but they will travel over land some distance when things dry up to look for more deep and uh, habitable pools out there in Australia. Let's see if I can grab the yellow feather who's hiding over here. 
Let's see if I can get Jekyll here. Ooh. All right, here we go. So obviously, just like any baby turtle, they're looking for cover because these guys are an easy prey item for a bird or a small mammal or another reptile. So you can see right here just how beautiful these little guys are and how they're both tucking their heads right in between their carapace and plastron. Now the carapace is the top, plastron's the bottom. I've been having a lot of fun with these guys, raising them up. They are only two months old. So these guys have a long way to go before I can get them out into a, their own personal pond out in the back of Camp Kennan, where I don't have to worry about any bird of prey or any other animal coming in and eating them up. So right now for today, we're just gonna borrow Nostradamus's and Darwin and Socrates watering hole, they don't seem to mind. And we're gonna let these guys swim around, get a little natural sunlight, get that exercise, and maybe we'll get some shots of these guys swimming. You're gonna be amazed at how effective and fast swimmers these guys are. So let's put them back in here. Here's a little tip, guys. Water turtles breathe air, as we know, right? So what I like to do is I never just plop them right back in the water. Sometimes they don't take a breath. It's hard for them to come right up to the surface. So what I like to do is I like to put them on the side of the water and let them go in on their own. This way, they've taken a breath, they can go in, and I don't have to worry about them drowning because believe it or not, with baby turtles, it's easy for them to drown if the water's too deep and they don't have enough things to climb out on. So these are little tips. If you have baby turtles of any species that are aquatic, make sure you let them go in the water on their own. Now you could do something like this and kind of scoot them in, but these guys look like they might be a little scared. Look, there you go. So you see, they keep that head tucked in, really incredible. So I'm gonna leave you right now, guys. Let you watch the side necks, the Longicollis, the Cheladina Longicollis, or Eastern Long Neck Turtle from Australia, swim around and have some fun exploring. We'll see you next time on Camp Cannon, guys.